episode of Quarantine Tech Talk. I am your host Divya. I am doing my master's in wireless networks and application from Amrita WNA. As we all are stuck at our home due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we must utilize this time in upskilling our knowledge. So Amrita WNA has come up with an idea of streaming technical podcasts. In this podcast, we will be discussing about the cloud computing market trends. Today we have Urmila. She works at Dell RSA as a software developer. She will be familiarizing us with the cloud computing market trends. Uh, thanks, Divya, for that brief introduction. Uh, I would like to thank Amrita WNA for having me here uh, for presenting in their first ever quarantine podcast. Today, I'll be talking about cloud computing market trends. Uh, without further ado, let's move on to the agenda of this session. So, uh, first of all, I will be giving pointers on cloud computing. Then uh, we'll answer the question, why cloud computing? Uh, then we'll be going through a brief history of the cloud evolution. Further, which I'll be talking about AWS, which is the uh, acronym for Amazon Web Services. After that, there will be a slide comparing both AWS and Azure with each other. Uh, then we'll be looking to the future prospect. We'll be looking into the future prospects of cloud in the market. So, uh, as the name suggests, cloud computing means something which is related to the computing. All of us use various gadgets such as mobile phones, uh, PCs, tablets, etc. in our daily life. The computational power and the storage that is uh, required to, you know, cater the, uh, cater the requirement of one particular user for these gadgets will be enough. But however, imagine if you have a company where you require a high-end processing of data or um, where you require a huge amount of storage, what will you do? So the answer to all this can be summed up in the term cloud computing. So basically the major advantage of cloud computing is auto scaling. That means it will scale automatically. The cloud provider who provides you the cloud service will take care of the cloud uh, scaling or the scaling of the, you know, um, scaling of the resources then it is high data availability that means in case of uh, in case of a data center that is on premise that means on premise in the sense if uh, the servers are sitting in your uh, location or in the location of your company then it is called on premise data centers so in the case of an on premise data center if a disaster occurs or if there is something you know some um, a risk a risk happens if there is a risk scenario then uh, there will be uh, you know there will be a um, Availability missing. There will be availability missing of the data, which can be overcome by cloud because it has many years uh, disaster recovery and they have a lot of cash and uh, they have done all the um, all the backup plans in case a data center is not available for their users. So it is not pay as you go model. That means you just have to pay for what you use, right? Uh, next. So here I have come up with an illustration to explain the on-premise, that is traditional on-premise data centers scenario. So let's meet Lisa. She is having or she's running a company which, uh, um, which you know, delivers medicines to hospitals and pharmaceuticals uh, from factories. So imagine there is a high demand for the services of the company. For example, during these times where a pandemic has taken over the world. So what happens? There is a high, a high demand of data or a high demand of services and the servers will get loaded, right? There will be a high, uh, you know, there will be a high um, requirement of the services that is being provided by her, by her company. During that scenario, one solution is that she can she can you know increase the number of data or data servers, or uh, she can install more servers. So this process incurs a lot of cost. Then it uh, requires the um, requires the you know time. Uh, then also the availability of manpower, etc. So basically, there is a lot to give 
in the solution. However, if we if we consider cloud computing, we don't have to uh, you know think about any of the above things if such a scenario exists because everything is taken care of by your cloud provider so on this slide let's uh, look on the right look at the right side um, where i have given the cloud computing service model so here there are uh, the, at the pyramid the bottom of the pyramid includes the infrastructure as a service then we have platform as a service and uh, SaaS. that is software as a service so infrastructure as a service in the sense the uh, uh, the entire infrastructure for example the storage or uh, the computational capacity is being rented out to the customers uh, and major example is aws that is amazon web services then in the case of platform as a service platform for example if you want to do a high computational coding like we have to compile the code or run the code then you can uh, you know rent out the platform from service providers one of the major uh, platform as a service you know cloud provider is amazon um, sorry microsoft azure then again i'm definitely sure most of us do use microsoft office 365 or google drive or onedrive etc all these comes under the category of software as a service that means entire software is being sold out to the customers so now let's go and revisit the scenario uh, where the you know the previous scenario where the the um, cloud is uh, replaced by the on-prem data centers so here again we have lisa and her company which delivers medicines to pharmaceuticals and hospitals but in, now in this scenario entire data and everything is all the computation is migrated to the cloud so as a result even if there is a high stress or high demand of data or uh, there is a you know there is a data traffic or uh, you know demand uh, demand for uh, high end services then the then they don't have to take care of the maintenance or uh, the cost of installing the servers or anything because everything even including the scaling up of uh, scaling up of the uh, servers or the storage or the computational capacity is taken care of by the uh, cloud provider now this is a brief uh, history of cloud evolution so here i have uh, listed out how the cloud has cloud journey has been embarked by different um, uh, you know different cloud providers first of all the form uh, first and foremost aws that is amazon web services embarked the journey of cloud in the year 2006 and it was followed soon by google microsoft ibm oracle etc and even nasa nasa has its open stack cloud uh, provider like it has come up with uh, its own cloud computing platform which is known as the open stack now uh, here in this slide we have uh, I have uh, we have a magic quadrant it is uh, a, it was published by the well known market leader for uh, you know uh, for uh, you know research and advisory called gartner uh, in the year july 2019 so this is a magic quadrant where we can clearly see the market leaders in the cloud uh, in the cloud is amazon web services and because of which i want to give a few pointers on aws so aws so basically aws is a global platform and uh, I'll come to it why why global because you know I will be talking about in the next slide uh, it is used by around 80 percentage of fortune 500 companies fortune 500 companies are the topmost companies around the globe and it provides a number of services like it provides all the three um, section of the pyramid that is IAS PAS and SAS mm -hmm. as well as many other services within that and as I have already given the data, uh, as of now, it provides 130 plus services and it has an excellent efficient billing system. There are about 24 regions existing for AWS and 79 availability zones and out of which 9 and 3 nine, uh, regions and availability zones will be coming soon respectively. So this slide, I have put this slide to give an overview of the extent or the global popularity or the reach of AWS. The blue, uh, the blue circles um, 
represents the regions that uh, where AWS services AWS is already available, and the coming soon regions are given in orange. So this itself gives a picture how much you know availability AWS has around the globe, or the reachability, or the popularity you can see. So here you can see. Uh, let's take an example of S3. That is simple storage service. It is nothing but just. Uh, just a storage space available to the user um, that is being given by the AWS Amazon Web Services. So it is S3. S3 is uh, available across all the regions. So each and everything. For example, EC2. EC2 box is available across each and every availability zone. Like if you you can create one EC2 box, you can create an EC2 box in each and every availability zone. So likewise. Now uh, this slide represents. Uh, you know the AWS client so I have given uh, pretty much if you see you can see major market leaders here like Netflix you have uh, Johnson & Johnson you have uh, Vodafone you have Samsung you have TCL etc Ericsson Kellogg's etc so this itself gives a whole picture of um, the reach and the uh, the huge you know the huge client base Amazon Web Services have. If you use for one hour, you just have to pay for that. You don't have to pay for an entire day where you are holding the resources, which is actually great because you don't have to spend a lot of money. Regard like you just have to. If I am using for six hours per day, then I only have to pay for six hours. So that is a very great thing. That's what I feel. Then uh, it's region. It has a region-specific pricing. For example, if you have a region in Mumbai, and also if you have a region in the US East, then the pricing for the same service will be quite different. Like there, even though it will be a slight difference, but however, there is a region-specific pricing. So depending on the countries, you know, develop, developing, etc. So they have given region-specific. Pricing as well, and also you can save up to 90% on reserved instances. Like you have already an instance that is reserved for your use, then you can save if you, whenever you want to leverage the uh, service of that instance, you can you just you can save uh, around 90% of the total cost, which is actually great. So now this slide uh, gives us a comparison of AWS and Azure. I have taken Azure because uh, Azure uh, is the major competitor for AWS in the cloud market. Um, I have chosen only a few features from a lot many because uh, I because I felt personally that these are some of the important pointers um, according to the market trends. So first of all, I have taken the ecosystem. So according to the AWS, AWS has a software marketplace with an extensive partner ecosystem. Uh, with very few Linux option in the case of Azure, Azure doesn't have a big ecosystem, so that's a catch. Again, for support of big data, uh, so big data is one of the trending technologies in the market. Technologies in the market. So I have taken the big data as one of the features. Uh, in the case of AWS, EBS storage uh, is ideal for handling big data EBS in the sense elastic block storage which is one of the storages of AWS but however in the case of Azure it does uh, the standard storage that is provided by the Azure does not support big data so we have to go for a premium storage which incur more price in the case of AWS the machine access uh, it can be accessed separately however in the case of Azure a group of machines are uh, you know, formed into a cloud service, and they respond to the same domain name, and uh, because of which, and so many, same domain name, and with various ports. Uh, so that is one major difference in the case of machine access between AWS and Azure. And in the case of long-term data archiving, in AWS we have something called cold storage. However, in Azure we don't have anything as such. So, if, for example, if you have a data and you have to you don't have to use it in the near future, but you want to save it for uh, information purpose or the knowledge, uh, or in the knowledge bank. Then you the app, the app option is to use AWS. Then comes the security. Security in the case of AWS is uh, provided using defined roles with permission controls and features. That means each user is given a uh, you know different role, which is great. Like not everybody can use. You know the features. Uh, the features are uh, used according to the roles provided to a particular user. But in the case of Azure, the security is provided on the the entire account, like account as a whole. 
So if the account is compromised, the entire data is compromised. So that's the risk. So let's look into the future of cloud in the market. Uh, so as per the IBM, around 85% of the new applications are being developed around cloud computing. And I have uh, taken Gartner uh, survey reports. So Gartner's, why Gartner survey? Because it is one of the leaders in the market for surveys and uh, researchers and um, also advisory. So uh, according to the Gartner, in 2019, the projected growth of a, uh, of the cloud market is around 214.3 uh, billion dollars as against uh, you know 182.4 uh, billion dollars in 2018 so which is like kind of a very huge growth then also according to the Gartner more than a third of organizations see cloud as an investment among the top investment priorities I cannot speak for all the companies but uh, according to me my company we are so much excited on the upcoming cloud journey and I'm working for the AWS uh, SaaS team and uh, in my company and uh, we know how much we have you know invested in the whole journey both technically and also financially so uh, so I think uh, so is the case for all the other companies out there in the market also, with the growing cloud trends or the growing cloud opportunities and technologies, um, there should be people who are cloud expert or uh, who are cloud engineers. Because of which we can see a trend where a lot of uh, major colleges are providing, you know, cloud computing as a course uh, in the for for students, you know, so that the young minds will be equipped with the expertise and knowledge to handle the, uh, you know, uh, to meet the demands of the cloud, uh, increasing cloud technology trends in the market. So that is it for the session today. Over to you, Divya. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Urmila, for giving us information on such a trending topic. And we wish to hear from you in the upcoming sessions also. And thank you, viewers, for listening to us so patiently. If you have any doubts regarding this session, please feel free to connect to our team. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for more interesting videos in our upcoming sessions of Quarantine Tech Talk.